Hi everybody, this is Keith Perkins with a Motor Age video sponsored by Autel. In today's video, we're going to use the IA900 in conjunction with the Ultra Tablet to complete an entire repair that includes a wheel alignment and an ADOS calibration on this Mercedes-Benz. The entire vehicle repair process becomes extremely streamlined when we use the IA900 with the Ultra Tablet. We're able to incorporate our digital vehicle inspection, our tire pressure monitoring system inputs, as well as our battery system test, all together with the wheel alignment and ADOS calibration system. Essentially taking the entire process from beginning to end of the repair in one particular platform that we can offload everything into our shop management system. So this vehicle has had suspension repairs that are going to affect the thrust angle. So we're going to need to perform a wheel alignment and then follow up with any ADOS calibrations that are required. We're given the option to select a standard wheel alignment or an advanced wheel alignment that includes steering angle resets and ADOS calibrations. So we'll select that. We'll go ahead and click the VID at the top and tell it to auto detect the vehicle. All right, we'll go ahead and perform our pre-scan. This is an essential part of any diagnostic or repair process. Capturing every single diagnostic trouble code in the entire system will help us set a baseline on what the vehicle was before we performed the repair or before we continued on any programming or calibration functions. Now that we've completed our complete vehicle scan, we can continue on to our wheel alignment process. We can select wheel alignment on the left and let the tool know why we were performing this wheel alignment. We're going to put that steering and suspension components have been serviced or replaced and that a wheel alignment is recommended or required prior to an ADOS calibration. Then we'll select OK. Now the requirement to do these inspections can be turned on or off in the tablets. We can go to the home page, go to settings, go to ADOS and aligner settings, and if we were not in a current alignment job, we could select wheel alignment software settings and turn on or off the requirement to do these inspection functions. Here at L1, we require all technicians to do a vehicle inspection prior to a calibration or an alignment. So we have that turned on in the tablet. This allows it to make one PDF report that has all of the data on it. We can upload that directly to our shop management system. Okay, let's grab the tablet and go around and do our inspection. We take photos of each tire and we use an off the shelf standard tread depth gauge to take measurements at multiple locations across each tire. Now that we've done our tread inspection, we also notated the type of wear we found on each tire. As you can see, the fronts have pretty normal wear, but the rears wore on the inside. This is pretty typical of these vehicles, but we still need to do the inspection regardless. And as you can see, we have nearly every option turned on. This is a very exhaustive inspection. And as we go through, we're gonna check differential and transfer case fluids, drive shaft, wheel hubs, carrying on to the front suspension, the front brake system, as well as all of the steering and suspension components. In each section of the inspection, you can determine if it was not inspected, okay, suggested for repair, requires repair. You can even upload pictures or video directly into the system, like we've done here. So let me finish this chassis inspection and we'll continue on to the work preparation. Now we can follow the instructions on the tool to get the vehicle and wheel clamp set up so we're ready to do our compensation and roll for the alignment. Now when we select next, it's going to walk us through the alignment procedure. So the first thing that we need to adjust is our rear camber. Now, to make this a little bit simpler, if we select our right rear camber and just by clicking it, we can bring it up to be full screen. We'll get to see that both on the screen above us, which we can flip around and face towards the vehicle, and then we can also take the tablet with us to perform the adjustment. Also, if you're not familiar with this particular platform of vehicle, when you look down at the steps, it's going to give you some specifics on how to adjust that suspension's camber or other alignment angle you're looking at. There's even an adjustment animation to help you understand better what you're actually doing and adjusting. Now that we're under the vehicle and ready to perform the adjustment, this is where having the tablet comes in handy because, as you can see, I can make my live adjustments and see them on the screen very clearly. This makes the whole entire procedure a lot faster as I don't have to be ducking back and forth around the lift jacks or any other stuff on the alignment rack in order to see the actual adjustment I'm making. Let's get this camber into spec. Now I know what you're thinking. Keith, you got it green, but it's 0.95. That's pretty close to uh, not green. And you're right. 
And if we look at the actual cross camber from side to side, you'll see why I went that direction. Adjustment specification for the left is between negative 0.32 and negative 1.32. And we're at negative 1.14. On the right hand side I just adjusted, our specification is positive 0 0.01, so almost zero degrees, to negative 0.99. So I'm pretty close to being outside of the range of allowed, but I'd rather be closer to cross camber being correct, which is the difference between the left and the right, than to have this one perfectly straight and the other one not. That's going to cause a more straight driving experience for the client. So now we've got to adjust our rear toe a little bit and we'll get this thing ready to rock and roll. Now that we've got all the rear done, we'll move on to the front. Now keep in mind when doing an alignment, anytime you make adjustments to the rear, the reference value in comparison to the front is gonna change. So although our alignment may have been good in the front before, it may be off a little bit now. We've got our alignment all completed. Now we need to continue on to our post alignment diagnosis to confirm if there's any other issues and then straight into our ADOS calibrations. Okay, our report was created. So we'll go ahead and click view our report. If we select our PDF document option at the top, select Select All and click OK, we're going to generate all of our inspection reports into a PDF. And now we can select ADOS Calibration. At this point, that's the superpower of this tool. The optical positioning system that's used to do the alignment can now be used to properly place the target without doing any work with plumb bobs, strings, or anything else. So the amount of time required to do the calibration is cut by more than half because we don't have to do any of those measurements separately. The system allows us to just set the target and do the adjustment right there. So let's follow through the process and I'll show you how quick and easy this is. We're gonna select multifunction camera. Now we need to select where the targeting system is in relationship to the vehicle. We're actually using position B as the vehicle is on a four post lift. So we'll select B and we need to enter the height value in millimeters. I've done this measurement when we first set the system up, so I know that we are 255 millimeters off of floor height. I went ahead and put a label on our system, so we all know that. I can now select 255. We're gonna need wheel clamps, the target, which is the CSC0601-02. I'll go grab that off the target wall here in a minute. We keep the target aid and the alignment aid set right over there by the alignment rack, so I'll just go grab the target real quick and we'll get it all set up. All right, so we went ahead and placed the distance target directly at the front of the car and we'll move on with the rest of the instructions. And we're gonna lower the actual alignment arms down so they can see the targets. Now I need to move the stand forward until the measurement for distance is correct. You'll notice the forward arrow is showing us that distance is our first adjustment we need to make. You'll notice the Autel puts it at 1,073 millimeters. If you reference that against OEM factory service information, it says 1,000 millimeters. The 73 millimeter difference is the offset from the target location and the measurement point. Now when we place the target board on the front of the frame, it will be in exactly the correct location to the manufacturer's specification. Then all we have to do from that point is the height, which we'll do momentarily. We're gonna take our target board and affix it now. The system gives us the ability to either manually move it up, or we can just press start and it will automatically adjust the height to the correct setting. All right, the key's on, everything's set up. We're gonna press okay. And as you can see, the calibration was successful. Now that we've done the calibration, we can move on to any additional resets needed. Then directly after our calibration, we've got our clear post scan. Now we're ready to set the vehicle up for the test drive and complete our verification of our repair. So as you can see, the i900 and the Ultra tablet allowed us to go from vehicle inspection to wheel alignment to ADOS calibration and every other aspect of the repair all the way till the end. I hope you join us next time. And thanks to Autel for sponsoring this video.